So now we'll spend the rest of the chapter talking about how to make alcohols and then how to use alcohol. So we'll start with the synthesis here. Uh, and most of the ways of making an alcohol are review. So there's a whole host of alkene addition reactions here. Uh, you know, dilute H2SO4 adds H2OH Markovnikov, so does oxymercuration, demercuration, uh, hydroboration oxidation uh, adds H2OH antimarkovnikov, and then we've got both syn and anti-dihydroxylation here to make diols. But those are all review reactions uh, from your alkene chapter, so I won't cover them again. Uh, we've also got SN1 and SN2 here. So in this case, if you use a strong nucleophile like NaOH, you can do SN2. Uh, backside attack as long as we don't have a tertiary halide anyways uh, and if we use something weak like water we can do SN1 and make an alcohol instead uh, so but again those are review you've learned those but we've got two new ways to make alcohols and these you haven't learned up until now and so we're gonna spend a little more time on these two so the first of these two new synthesis reactions we call reduction and we'll talk a little more specifically about what reduction means because it's really important here. Uh, but in this case, we're adding hydrogen across a carbon-oxygen double bond. This carbon and the oxygen both gain a hydrogen. Notice there's a hydrogen here now, and this one's here. So this is analogous to what we saw with adding hydrogen across a carbon-carbon double bond. And in fact, the same reagent we use there, H2, with one of your metal catalysts here, also works here. So you can use it for a carbon-carbon double bond. You can also use it for a ketone or aldehyde's carbon-oxygen double bond as well. So, and this is simply called reduction. Now to see why it's called reduction, i uh, got to talk a little bit about how we do oxidation states. So if you guys recall oil rig or Leo the Lion says Gur from Gen Chem, lose electrons oxidation, gain electrons reduction. So we got to look at how this is actually gaining electrons. Well, it's kind of how we do oxidation states here. Now in Gen Chem, you probably learned how to assign oxidation states from a formula, chemical formula. We're going to do it here from the structure. So if you look, for the purpose of oxidation state, we pretend, it's not true, but we pretend that every bond is ionic. So if I look at, say, this carbon-oxygen bond here, those four electrons right there, they don't belong to both carbon and oxygen. They're not sharing them by this convention. Oxygen's more electronegative. They all belong to oxygen. They're his. Those don't belong to carbon at all. Okay, obviously we know those are covalent bonds and they're being shared, but again, this is just the convention used uh, to determine oxidation states. Now, a bond between a carbon and a carbon, no, neither one is more electronegative. Those are actually shared in half. One of those electrons belongs to carbon on the, on the right, and one belongs to the carbon on the left. Same thing with this carbon-carbon bond. One belongs to the carbon on the right, one belongs to the carbon on the left. And so we can see here that the middle carbon, and that's the relevant one here, has a total of two electrons. Well, carbon normally has four valence electrons, so only having two this carbon is in the plus two oxidation state. So it turns out what we look at with reduction here is you're gaining bonds to electronegative atoms. Because again, if carbon's bonded to more electronegative atoms, all the electrons in the bonds belong to that more electronegative atom, not to carbon. So the only time carbon gets to own the electrons that really commonly occurs in organic molecules is when carbon is bonded to hydrogen. Carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So if we look here, so in the product here, this alcohol, these two electrons right here in this bond, carbon's more electronegative than hydrogen, those belong to carbon. Now again, these two belong to oxygen, not carbon, and then we'll cut this in half, and one belongs to carbon in the middle, one belongs to the carbon on the right, same thing, we'll cut this bond in half, one belongs to the carbon in the middle, one belongs to the carbon on the left, and so overall, if we look at the carbon in the middle, he's got one, two, three, four electrons, and now is in the zero oxidation state, and so to go from plus two to zero, he has gained two electrons, and that is where the, re the term reduction comes from. Now, in this case, we don't always look at the nitty-gritty of assigning oxidation states here to figure out who's oxidized and who's, who's reduced. What we normally look at is if you gain, F we usually look at it from carbon's perspective, it's organic chemistry, but if you gain bonds to electronegative atoms, that's reduction. Or if you lose bonds, to hydrogen, so, well, let's see, did I say that right? Oh, I've got this exactly backwards. How about if you do this the other way? If you lose bonds to electronegative atoms, or if you gain bonds to hydrogen, that is reduction. And you can do, 
lose two bonds to electronegative atoms, or you can gain two bonds to hydrogens, or you can do one of each. Lose one bond to electronegative and gain one bond to a hydrogen, and it's still reduction. If you do the exact opposite, if you gain bonds to electronegative atoms, like oxygen, or you lose bonds to hydrogen, that's oxidation. And notice that's where the name oxidation comes from. Most commonly, and especially in this chapter, we're talking about oxidation meaning gaining bonds to oxygen. We'll bring this back up in the chapter later. Uh, but in this case, that would be oxidation. So, but this is reduction, and we saw it, you know, we can go down and, and assign oxidation states and see it, uh, but more commonly, we're just gonna keep track of the new bonds formed and the old bonds broken, and are they to more electronegative atoms or to hydrogen instead? That's kind of the gist here. A um, couple other things here is we've got a couple of new reagents here. We've got sodium borohydride and we've got lithium aluminum hydride. So, and notice these are called hydride reagents. These are kind of the equivalent of having H minus, the hydride ion in this solution. Um, H minus, uh, well, there's reasons we don't use H minus specifically. We use these alternative reagents instead. Um, but in this case, uh, they're hydride reagents. They will accomplish the same thing as H2 with a catalyst for ketones and aldehydes, uh, but definitely in a different fashion. And let's take a look at that in a little more detail on the next slide. All right, so this is aluminum hydride down here. So, and if we take a look at this bond right here, it doesn't really matter which of the four we look at, uh, but that bond is very polar. Notice aluminum, uh, often considered a metal, hydrogen a non-metal, and so that bond has a fair amount of ionic characteristics. It's a little more polar than the boron-hydrogen bond in NaBH4, and for that reason, lithium aluminum hydride here, often symbolized LaH, by the way, uh, is more reactive than sodium borohydride. So, uh, but both will react with ketones and aldehydes. The difference in reactivity is nothing to concern yourself with now. We'll deal with that later in the semester. Uh, but for now, what's gonna happen here is one of these hydrides is gonna break off. And instead of just going off and floating away as H minus, it actually simultaneously as it breaks off, comes and attacks the carbonyl carbon. And to make room, these pi electrons shift up to the oxygen. So that's kind of what we're doing here in this reaction. If we kind of look at what that looks like here, we've got carbon bonded to two methyl groups. It's now bonded to a new hydrogen. And now the oxygen has a single bond and a negative charge. We call this an alkoxide ion, conjugate base of an alcohol. And we also have AlH3. So, and then we simply add H3O plus, or sometimes just water. Uh, if you do this in NaBH4, you actually just protonate from the solvent, ethanol here. Uh, but in this case, that's all we're going to do is just protonate it so to get our corresponding alcohol. So in this case, this is nucleophilic attack followed by proton transfer, just simply protonation. So that's the mechanism going on here, whether we do this with a ketone or aldehyde. Uh, we'll find out later on in the year that aldehydes are more reactive than ketones, but that's not the most important thing to worry about now. Uh, but this works for both ketones and aldehydes. With a ketone, you get a secondary alcohol. With an aldehyde, you get the primary alcohol instead. So a new way to form both secondary and primary alcohols here.